Welcome to this Quantum GIS walkthrough. I will be walking you guys through my final project for Geomatics 4008A from Carleton University. This is uh, December 2012. And what we're going to learn in Quantum GIS is we're basically learn how to download Quantum for starters and then how to collect some data there's various places to get data, but we're just going to go through one specific example. And the study for this for this uh, walkthrough will be the North Sea uh, oil situation, basically. And so we're going to learn how to uh, add add vector files, uh, clip the vector files, do difference analysis on the vector files, uh, do buffers, uh, make shape files, create new shape files, make a shape file from uh, attribute table, how to query an attribute table, and uh, and how to make a polygon essentially, and then hopefully have some some basic analysis component to it, just to give a a GIS real world situation to the situation. So essentially, what the situation is is there's this oil company named Ajip. They are Italian, and they are looking to purchase a well in the North Sea or an or any well around around uh around Great Britain or the United Kingdom for as 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 little cost as possible because they're quite a small oil company and they they can't really afford to to buy the most expensive wells so they're going to have to buy a nice cheap well and just get as much as they can that's and that's the goal and we're going to use a free open source program called Quantum anyone can download this program and anyone can use it and uh so Hopefully you guys continue with me. I'm not sure if this is going to go. I'm not sure if it's going to go on YouTube. It might. And I'm not sure if it's going to go up in one big part or if this is going to be like part one of eight or something. So we'll just see how that goes, guys. Okay, welcome to, welcome back anyway. Now we're going to go and download Quantum GIS, which is available on pretty much every platform you could possibly want. So let's just check that out. Quantum GIS, here it is. Here's QGIS.com or .org, sorry. And it's going to click the download free button, basically, and it'll bring you to a page with a bunch of different options. So it's available in French, uh, Dutch, and and Italian, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can get it. You can get it Windows, Linux, um, Fedora. All these different different types of like things like Ubuntu, all these crazy packages, Mac obviously, Android. So there's a lot of different types. Uh, I'm using Windows, so that's just that's what I have. Here's uh, QGIS. Click the download button, and it'll take. This it says it's going to take five minutes to download, and and then you'll have to install it after that. I think it takes around. It shouldn't take longer than ten minutes. I already have it downloaded. It's actually extremely simple to download and install, so I'm not even going to show you that part. So we're just going to skip right to. Uh, there's it'll download a couple different things. I actually downloaded Grass as a side part, but you don't need to download Grass. And this is just a pop-up telling me that I was I was experimenting with different plugins, which are basically additions to the software, and I didn't end up keeping a lot of them because I didn't find that they were useful for this project. Nevertheless, you can add plugins, which, excuse me, greatly increase the capabilities of Quantum, essentially. So you can up, uh, you can upload it. You can start it up in browser too, if you want. I, I don't know if I've really tried that yet. It's just kind of like a simpler version of it. Uh, it's kind of stupid in my opinion. But so here is Quantum GIS. This is 1.8 Lisboa. And as you can see, there's different plugins here. This one here is a plugin of some sort, which I haven't, I don't use. And so, so right from the start, you can tell it's quite similar to. Is, are we still downloading? I can't tell if we're downloading. Right from the start, you can tell it's quite similar to ArcGIS in its in its layout. You got your map viewer here, your table of contents here, all your buttons up here, and then I guess I moved this down here, which you can move these things around. They're quite customizable. But uh, and yeah, I guess you can put it vertical too if you really want to on the side and probably this side too and whatever. So it's customizable and it has nice. Uh, the GUI itself is a little more 
user friendly. I think the icons are a little more, uh, they're almost cartoony, and it's got nice rounded corners compared to ArcGIS uh, 10. I haven't used uh, 9.3 or anything earlier than 10 actually, which is kind of surprising, but I haven't for ArcGIS. Uh, then the reason why we're using Quantum is because it's free to download. Anyone can just go down there and download it, uh, like a five-year-old could do it, and uh, it's free. So if you compare that to ArcGIS, I think a year's like if you were to buy ArcGIS with like an ArcInfo license, I think it would cost like a thousand dollars. And uh, and I don't know how the updating works. Like if you'd get like 10.1 and 10.5 and 11 whenever they come out with those. Whereas with Quantum, you can just constantly upgrade. I don't know what this even means. Whatever. Uh, so you can. <laughs> That was a little weird. That threw me off my game. Okay, so yeah, so Quantum has all these plugins, as I was mentioning earlier, which allow you to basically improve the analytical power of the software uh, for free. And Grass does the same thing. Grass is not quite as user friendly as Quantum, uh, it but it provides a lot of uh, a lot of more flexibility for performing uh, actual analysis on the data. So let's go get some data, and we'll bring it into uh, into Quantum and we'll start working with it and we'll see how it goes. Apparently we're downloading something as you can tell by the Google Chrome thing here which I didn't want to but so here's the wiki I'm not sure if this will be linked in the description or not it might probably won't be but basically here is the download spot where we're getting this data from it's from the Department of Energy and Climate Change and this is free data as well and you can just go get it I'm pretty sure if you just searched for uh, Department of Energy and, and uh, Climate Change, and you go to Data Maps, and then you go to Offshore Maps and GIS Files, you will find your way here, or you can just copy and paste this URL, which I'll probably put somewhere, maybe on the page or on the description or something. So all we want is uh, coastlines and wells and significant discoveries. All the rest of the data in here uh, unfortunately, pipelines is not actually a it's not actually accessible, which would have been awesome to have for this project. But we've looked around for it, and I can't we can't find anything. So we're gonna go with wells. So basically, you just click on wells. It gives you a little pop up here. You click the download button, and it'll actually download two of the ones. Apparently, I need to cancel that one because I don't want to do that QGIS stuff. So it'll give you two here, and it doesn't really matter. I've actually done this a couple times, so it's given me two and three instead of one. 0 and 1. So we basically you open it up and you extract 2 and you just pick a location, whatever location you want. So I'm going to put this under school, Carleton University, 7. Uh, hold on a second here. Let's go make a new folder here. We'll call this one December 18th. It's getting late in the year. Okay, and this will be the folder containing all the stuff for today. So let's just uh, start this again. There we go. Uh, school, Carleton University, semester seven, and uh, advanced GIS, final project, December 18th. So you're just going to put it in your folder. Your folder will obviously be named something different. It'll be a different location, but it all works the same way. And if you go open up that folder now, you will see that it'll be in there, hopefully. Well, I almost guarantee you it'll be in there. So we just go pull it up here. Final project, December 18th. So there's your wells. So then you're just going to repeat that, essentially. If you go, let's get rid of the quantum tab. So we're going to repeat that for, we need wells. We'll do that for significant discoveries as well. Hit the download button, and then extract, and then, and once again, see it didn't keep that same thing for some reason, so just be careful where you're putting stuff. Always make sure that you do your directories properly or you're going to have problems. Now with, uh, with, with ArcMap, you never want to have uh, any file name have spaces, so just make sure that I don't know if that applies in quantum but just make sure that you just deal with that uh, and then we just want this one I think 
Yeah, that's all we want. Just those just those three files. Nothing too heavy. And we'll extract it too. See once again didn't save my spot, but we'll just quickly go through there. And we'll click on December eighteenth and we'll drop it in there. And it's gone. Okay, so now we'll just open up the folder, see that they're all there. We got coastlines, we got discoveries, and we have wells. And they're all different files. There's a projection, a uh, shape file, and the DBF. And so that's all you need to know for that. Now we'll go back into here, and now we're going to start adding data. Yay! So click on the add vector. I probably did that too quick, but up here, you got the add vector layer. This is like your add stuff. So you got add vector, add raster, add post JIS, add space spatial light filter, add a you know MS SQL layer, all these ones that you know that I've never used. We're gonna use this one later on. We we're gonna use this one later on, or we're gonna use a variant of it, and we'll be doing some editing. And these are also just handy tools to have in case you want to move to your previous uh, zoom, and these are for moving around and navigation in the window which we'll get a better look at in a second. So just leave it on file, there's none of this, you don't have to do any of this silly stuff. Just go to data set, browse, and right now I'm in December 10th, but just make sure you navigate to the right spot. So as you can see I'm in final project, here's December 18th, here's our wells, you can just pick all three of them like that, or you can do control, you know, or you can do shift up or whatever you want, and we'll add them in. Now, I think there's quite a bit of wells. I think there's, uh, I forget how, exactly how many wells there are initially. Let's just check it out. Inside, just like an arc map, there's an attribute table. So you just right click on it. And so there's 13,000 wells. And just open up the attribute table in here. And there's 161 significant wells. So let's just pull the significant wells on top because there are a little bit, uh, not, not quite as many of them. So in order to change a color, because uh, these colors are a little bit difficult to look at, perhaps you might think. I don't know. I'm not really an expert with colors, but so here's brown. We'll just change the land to something uh, kind of nicer to look at, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe that's nicer to look at. Nice little green. And then we'll throw on, uh, for wells, uh, maybe a... a uh, Sure, like a peachy, a peachy yellow. That's significant discoveries, actually. And then for wells, this is just you just double click on that, or you can just double click on the little circle there. And as you can see, there's different tabs in here for different things, which we're not going to get into, I don't think. And wells, we could probably just leave wells as purple, actually. So there we go, guys. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're what we have to do is we have to remove. Um, all of the all of the wells that are on the mainland or on any any island or part of the of the of the of the like land mass so all the onshore wells essentially. So, in order to do that, let me just make sure I'm still recording here. Okay, we're still recording. <laughs> I want to make sure we're just talking to myself, which I am. Uh, so we're gonna just get rid of all the onshore wells and just keep the offshore wells. So in order to do that, we are going to go into vector at the top here, processing tools, difference. Uh, it took me a while to figure out the difference between all these things. Uh, clip is just like ArcMap, and but they have a, the opposite of clip is, dissolve, is difference. So this is awesome. So we're basically going to go Input the vector layer will be, let me just, can I move this? Yes, I can. So we're just going to move this so you can see what's going on here. So we're going to take, our input vector layer will be wells. Our difference layer will be the coastline. So essentially that's saying uh, which features do you want to clip? We want to clip the wells by what? The coastline is essentially what that means. And then just click on browse here and name your file, whatever. We're going to move into 18 here, though, December 18th. So we're going to call this one Offshore Wells. Whoopsies. There we go. And we're going to save it, and we're going to hit the OK button. 
and it's going to output. Now this, I think, actually takes some time to uh, to actually produce the file. I'm not sure how long it takes. Probably about a couple minutes. So essentially, uh, I'll probably do. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a actual report with this or not, because I think that I mean I could do a I could write up a report and take screenshots of what I've been doing, but I think this is such a better way to to actually show not only what I did inside ArcMap, but for other people to be able to replicate it in the future. This is actually a true walkthrough, whereas you know putting uh, up a a screen up screenshots is is just like it's a very archaic way of doing it. This is I don't know why it's telling me to do this. It's probably because I'm doing multiple things. I've got my music playing and recording and I don't know quantum GISing. It tells me it's not responding, which is not good. Oh no, it's good. So sometimes it's done this. I think it's crashed on me once since I've been doing this whole. I've done this this analysis probably three times now. And it's crashed on me once. I don't remember why it crashed. It just kind of froze and didn't respond. But often it'll freeze for a little bit. So just be patient. Sorry, I just hit my mic. And uh, and you'll be okay. So with uh, 13,000 wells, it does take some time for it to make all its clips. And we're not going to clip the significant discoveries because uh, none of the significant discoveries are actually on land. They're all offshore wells, so that's good. And essentially what's going to happen in this analysis is we're going to we're going we're going to basically eliminate wells based on undesirable attributes. So if a well is oh, what? Can I get rid of this? Keep the current color scheme and don't show the message again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's really weird. So, we're going to eliminate wells based on undesirable attributes. For example, distance from a shipping point, from, from like a processing plant, which in this case would be London. Difference from d uh, depth of well. So, the deeper the well, the more costly it is to extract the resources because uh, you have to dig deeper and the, the pressure from the water just gets, you know, gets more and more. There's more the water, like the water pressure as you go deeper under the surface, like under under sea level is more intense, so obviously costs more. And uh, and there's envi there's an environmental constraint which we'll be making later, and then there's the significant discoveries which I believe we'll be making as well, which uh, significant a significant discovery is actually um, is obviously more important than a non-significant discovery because you're going to make more money off of a so-called so significant discovery. So as you can see, this is starting to take a while. I maybe should have skipped this, but it provides me a good opportunity to explain what's going to happen so you guys are prepared to, uh, you know, prepared for the, the inevitable here. So it's definitely taking some time, though. Um, what else are we going to do next? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe I'm, I think I'll stop the recording here, and then we'll just resume it, and I'll tell you how long it was. Uh, time has elapsed since since we got up since when we got up to 100. So, see you guys in a bit.